Hello, everybody. This is episode 323 of Optimal Living Advice, the show on which I, Greg Audino, take listener questions about various life struggles and offer some support here on the show. Thanks a lot for being here with me today. This time, we are going to take a question that I think will be important for many of us, uh, especially in this day and age when there are so many sources out there that might have us second guessing ourselves uh, or offering thoughts that conflict with what we'd once believed, many times in ways that are less than ideal, I guess. We're going to talk about gaslighting, uh, this nasty little word that I feel like has only really existed for, what, like six or seven years? But it has certainly made an impact in its short life. So let's hear what's on this asker's mind about gaslighting as we optimize your life. I've never been someone who's good at trusting themselves. It's very easy for me to second-guess things. In some ways, I think this is great and helps me stay open-minded, but I know it still hurts me. For one, I know I'm susceptible to manipulation and have ended up on the wrong side of this many times. Lately, I found myself lost in this loop again at work. I get the feeling that my boss is gaslighting not just me, but a lot of people in the office. A lot of my ideas and work are being put into question, but I just have such a hard time knowing what's true and what isn't, or what to trust and what not to trust. Is there any way to know, or any signs I should be looking for, so that I can stop second-guessing myself once and for all? Once and for all? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure that is possible for any of us, Asker. But I'm also not sure that we would want it to be. You know, based on exactly what you said about the open-mindedness that pairs so nicely with the frustrations of being so prone to second-guessing things, uh, as well as the pride that one might take in being a trusting person. Like I've said a few times over the years on OLA, uh, some of our worst qualities are also some of our best, and vice versa. But anyway, I thank you for sending this in, and I do think that we can talk through this a bit more so that you can better protect yourself, and understand what's happening when it comes to interactions with your boss and some others as well whose intentions you might not know about. And I do think it's that very word, intention, that lies at the core of this. What might the intention be based on both the goals of the other person and what they've displayed consistently? Now, that first part can be a little tricky. Because it can be hard to know whether the goals of others, or even our own goals, are based in what we say we want to accomplish uh, or what's driving us subconsciously. But behavior over time can tell us more of the tale. So let's think about how this could apply to your boss. Now, what greater good might they be after? That's a good question to start with. In the workplace, it's especially easy to hypothesize about this, right? They, wanna, they want the company to succeed. In theory, that's any boss's goal in a professional setting. So when you think about that, does your boss's behavior towards both you and your employees align with it? Does your boss put your ideas and work into question in such a way that shows that they're trying to influence you to be the best version of yourself? Are they encouraging you to expand your mind and push yourself? Or does it seem like it might be something else? Maybe like trying to save face in front of their own boss, or feeling threatened by how proficient your work is and the possibility that you might take their job someday. So this is how goals can maybe bleed together or be difficult to truly identify. So we might look towards how your boss treats others. You said that you fear this is happening to a lot of people in your office. So, what happens when you examine that further? Does your boss generally try to celebrate others once they've really gone above and beyond? Does your boss have a history of bringing out the best in employees, even if it feels like tough love at the beginning? Or do they have a reputation of being cold-hearted, never satisfied, yet also never giving constructive criticism or tools that can help employees bring their work to a level in which your boss is satisfied? So, as you can see, we can really look past our own patterns and our most recent exchanges with people to get a sense of what they're after, and whether or not we can trust them when it seems like they're encouraging us to think something different than we have been thinking. And if you have the strength to pull away from people who you feel are indeed gaslighting or manipulating you, you can also learn a lot from how they respond to that. 
Now, it's important to understand that someone who is more narcissistic and maybe more likely to be manipulative can be very reliant on their ability to do this and retain that sense of control over people. So, if you make it known that you're pulling away from them, or if they just get a sense that you are, you might find that they respond by making a lot of, a lot of empty promises about how things can be better, uh, really playing into apologies or compliments directed towards you. But if you do run the gamut and reignite your relationship with such people, like I said, you'll find that these promises are often empty and that you're quickly subject to the same type of treatment from them that you were initially. So, look, at the end of the day, this is something you struggle with, and it will be hard to get past. It's not impossible, but it could very well take some time. So take your time, and be patient with yourself. And also remember that even those of us who have an easier time with this are often wrong, or you know, at least get led into directions that we later regret. No one will or can know all the answers about someone's intentions from the get-go. Keep your focus on paying attention to what we talked about today and putting that effort forth, rather than always getting it right. There will be a point at which you have to let go of trying to figure it out right away and ultimately take the risk of being taken advantage of once again. That point will always be there for everybody, though. And the more one takes that risk, regardless of the outcome, the more one stands to learn. Okay, and a big thank you to the asker once again for submitting this question today. And I want to double down on the end note there about how we just need to release sometimes. You know, very difficult for some of us who maybe need or feel as though we're able to keep asking more questions or keep analyzing and ultimately predict the future. But taking that leap is crucial. And I think that that need to do so shows up in a whole lot of ways for all of us. So keep an eye out for it. That's going to bring us to the end, though, everyone. So if you liked this episode and you feel uh, as though you would like to submit a question of your own, you can do so by emailing me at advice at oldpodcast.com, advice at oldpodcast.com. I'd be happy to hear from you. You will definitely get a response, and I'm sure your question will touch the lives of many other listeners too. Something to keep in mind for everyone. So, take care everybody, good luck out there, and I will see you again in 324. That's where your optimal life awaits.